Hi everyone, Ben from the Microbiology Society here. I'm at the Excel Centre in London for New Scientist Live, a giant exhibition of the latest science and technology. We're going to go and have a look around now at some of the exhibits and we're going to talk to some microbiologists about their research. Hi everyone, I'm here with Dr. James Logan from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Uh, he's been telling the audience here about infecting himself with hookworm and about parasites in general. Now, James, I mean, parasites are, are dreadful things. Uh, they cause hundreds of thousands of deaths a year. Should we just eliminate them? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's a really good question. Part of my job is, in fact, to try and do that, to, to get rid of the parasites that cause diseases like malaria and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, it's much more complex than that when you, when you start to think about it because, um, you know, parasites are part of the natural world. And if you think about a food web, you sort of, you know, it might conjure up the image of sort of, you know, the, the, the Sahara where you, you have a lion that eats a zebra, that eats grass. But there are lots of things that consume lions as well. And parasites are one of those things. And in fact, 75% of links within a, a food web can be made up by parasites. So if you remove the parasites from that, that whole sort of ecosystem could, in theory, collapse. We don't really know exactly what would happen. Um, but they're, they're clearly a very sort of important integral part of food webs and of ecology as, as we know it. So it's a bit dangerous to think about eliminating them completely. And I'm not sure we'd ever be able to do that anyway. So <laughs> I think they're here to stay in some form or another. So you mentioned mosquitoes there, obviously a big part of the food chain. And as we know, they transmit malaria, which is going to be one of the biggest killers of all time, probably. Now, in your talk, you were talking about why some people are, uh, are bitten a lot and why others aren't. So, for example, I don't get bitten very much on holiday, but my girlfriend gets bitten to shreds, which is very handy for me. What, why is it that some people do and some people don't? Well, that's something that we've been researching for, for quite a while in my lab, and it's all to do with the way you smell. So people who don't get bitten smell differently to mosquitoes. Not to us, but they do to mosquitoes. And they, their bodies are sort of producing natural repellents. It's almost as if their body has a natural defense against mosquitoes. Um, and so this horrible smell keeps the mosquitoes away. We've isolated it. We're creating products based on these sort of odor repellent uh, human chemicals that we could use then to, to try and help prevent mosquito bites and, and use them in, in scenarios where diseases are a problem as well. So you're looking to identify these and maybe embed them in clothing and things like that? Would that be a way of, uh, of stopping people getting bitten? Yeah, so you know, we know what the chemicals are. We know that they're extremely effective repellents. Um, and now what we're doing is, is we're working to formulate them into lots of different things. So we can embed them into plastic so they last for a very long time. We can incorporate them into clothing. You can even spray them into, the, into your skin or into the air to create this sort of spatial repellency. So there are lots of ways that we can use these new repellents to, to control mosquitoes and stop them biting us. And what about the, the malaria parasite itself? I mean, you mentioned there that it, it can affect the behavior of mosquitoes. Uh, so maybe you can tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So parasites are very clever and they have the ability to manipulate their hosts for their own benefit to enhance their own transmission. And that's exactly what we see with malaria parasites. So when a mosquito has a malaria parasite, it becomes a sort of super sensing mosquito. Its sense of smell is heightened and it's able to detect human odor much better than an uninfected mosquito at the point at which the parasite is transmissible, which is quite incredible. And even inside us, we think that the, the, the parasites are manipulating our body odor and making us more attractive to mosquitoes to, uh, to enhance the transmission of the parasite. And maybe there's, uh, there's examples from other parasites that change host behavior in, in order to uh, make themselves transmitted or to, or to make it easier for them to be transmitted to, to other hosts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you just look in the animal kingdom and this kind of thing happens everywhere. You know, from, from uh, you know, ants that are infected with a parasite and crawl to the top of a blade of grass and are picked off by a bird to, um, you know, rats that are infected with toxoplasma that, um, you know, change their behavior and are no longer frightened by the smell of cats for example, um, you know, there's so many examples around here and I think we're only starting to get to grips with the sort of teeny tiny things, you know, these parasites that affect our health. Um, and by investigating these quite complex um, natural sort of systems, um, we can develop better ways and understand the systems better and develop better ways to control them. So one thing you brought today, a little prop, is this box here, which, well, it's full of mosquitoes and you can see me sort of inching back ever so slightly. Now, I'm definitely not going to put my hand in it, but maybe you could explain what this is all about. Yeah, so basically, we'll just turn it around so you can see inside here. But basically, this, mos this, this is one of our mosquito boxes. Um, we've got lots of hungry, there's about 200 hungry mosquitoes uh, in here. And on top of the cage, we've got a bit of mesh, which we use 
to um, allow the mosquitoes to smell you. So instead of putting your arm inside, which where you would be bitten a lot, believe me, uh, you can put your arm on top like this and we can measure the response of the mosquitoes to the odor coming off your hand and tell how attractive you are to mosquitoes. Do you normally get bitten? Do you know what, I'm going to say I don't get bitten that often. I'm, I'm, oh, well, okay. I'm saying that, so, so I'm confident those... that I'm not, right. and now I'm changing my well, mind, let, I'm sweating let's slowly. Let's do a quick, quick study. Put well, let's do it. Top. Okay, arm on top, here uh, we go. And I'm just going to count how many uh, try and land on your arm. So we've got one, two, three, we've got, we've got four mosquitoes there, and do you know what, they're just hanging out, they're not particularly interested in you whatsoever, and you can see that they're not moving around the mm. edges. So if you were attractive, they'd be buzzing around, they'd be landing, and they'd be probing through the mesh, trying to get at your blood. So I think this is maybe not quite scientific, but it's certainly some proof that you're not attractive to mosquitoes. Well, do you know what? I'm pleased about that. James, thank you so much.